was uh, because I'm being filmed, I'll, I'll be recorded that I'm meeting the state requirement for the outreach for unmet needs for trans But that was part of the co-op this presentation. So very briefly, as a recap, for all, there is a requirement in the state that the recipients of state funding have a social services transportation advisory committee or council. And there is one in Monroe County. It's administered by the Monroe County LTC. And annually, they identify, go through a process to identify the transit needs. And typically, what we do is we go out to the RPAC meetings or the regional planning advisory councils throughout Monroe County and update them on what transit services are available in the area and solicit input from them as to what, if there are any unmet transit needs. <coughs> and this meeting today fills that function for Man Flakes as well. And what I always do in, in those sessions is uh, remind the group that just because someone says, well, I'd like to go from point A to point B, and there isn't a bus that goes down from point A to point B, doesn't mean that it's necessarily unmet need. There's a uh, process to, just, to determine whether it's reasonable to meet or not. And briefly, these are the criteria. It has to demonstrate that it will return at least 10% of the operating cost and fares. Uh, can't duplicate an existing service. Um, Maybe required to the uh, American Disabilities Act. And that there are sufficient monies. From all sources to, to pay for it, basically. So, oftentimes we'll get a request. Well, I want to go from point, you know point A to B, point B, but you're the only person that wants to do that. And if we ran the service for you and we charge a two dollar fare, we you know we cover less than a percent. So many of the, many of the things are identified are not reasonable to me. So, um, does anybody have any unmet needs they want to voice at this time that I can share with the LTC? Well, you can address it if you want to talk about with the airport. You know, is that, that isn't, I mean, my suggestion, it doesn't really classify as an unmet need at this point because there's so many other opportunities. Right. But I would like, you know, to just hear that again if it's on the record because we have, we are going to continue to talk about that. Okay. Um, that's a good point, and, and Grady makes a good point, because all of the comments are identified in the report that the LTC puts together that, are, that come from all the RPACs, whether there's, you know, it's needed or not, or it's reasonable to meet or not, but we, that's a good point. We can make that, because it does keep, continue to come up uh, from time to time. No, I didn't look too close to that. It would kind of, I would say... All right. Well, um, so in, regarding that... What I wanted to talk about specifically in conjunction with the Winter Recreation Summit here today is uh, Estes services and how we provide service to recreation and maybe some things that we could consider in the future that we're not doing. So, quick review of our existing services. We have regional routes that go north to Reno, south to Lancaster. Quick map of our, of our services. Um, as well as frequent connections to Bishop, three round trips, four round trips a day uh, between Mammoth and Bishop. Are you aware of, I'll say anybody, but of anybody who comes from the caster to their ski, or do they get on the bus with their skis and come up? I, I don't know that. I'm, just, I'm really curious. I haven't thought about it until the summit changes. I would say infrequent. Uh, I, would, I don't know that I would say never, but it's just anecdotal. It's infrequent. Although one of the most recent times that I rode up from Bishop, uh, there was a gentleman that boarded at our bus stop there at Bishop at Bonds Kmart, and he had all of his ski paraphernalia. I mean, he had his ski pants and ski coat on, he had his skis and boots and everything. And so I asked him, I said, do you, and he didn't look, I didn't recognize him, he the he was from Bishop. I said, do you ride this bus off? And he said, no, I came up this week and my car's not really equipped for snow. And I didn't want to deal with it. So I'm staying in Bishop and I'm just using the bus to get back and forth because it's working great. Now, I don't know if Mammoth, you know, people in Mammoth want to hear that because it's not, you know, potentially that's TOT and and sort of visitor dollars that you know, could have or may have gone to Mammoth, but nonetheless, that was an interesting uh, real-life situation where I saw 
Well, I mean, I took, I took the bus trip from San Diego many times back in the early 80s. <laughs> you know, just, you know, the, the big bus and stuff, but I just wanted to get from Lancaster. You know, the other thing, and it is apples and oranges, but I'll share with you since you've raised the question, the thought that I've had where uh, it's, it's apples and oranges in terms of competing with air service, but they're, because they're different. There's clearly a time difference. But if you need to get here, you'll get here on the bus. Or you won't necessarily on the planes when, you, when there are weather issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those too. Okay. Um, so, but we've thought about, you know, in, internally we've thought about maybe trying to market along that line, but I don't want to, I don't want to do anything negative against the air service, to be honest. You know, say, you know, and really with advanced reservation, it's not even really much cheaper to take the bus than the bus. You get a good fare. But if you're in Lancaster, you don't fly anywhere. No, I mean, you can get anyone from LA to Lancaster exactly. easily using Metro. And, and, yeah. So then, uh, obviously, we have extensive local services. This is our uh, transit map and the color coding of uh, each of the routes uh, that operate. Uh, we have 15, 20, 15 to 20 minute frequency to all of the Mammoth Mountain portals, Main Lodge, Canyon Lodge, and Eagle Lodge. Um, and community circulator routes, the purple and gray line that, that stay uh, pretty much exclusively within town. And the yellow line operates uh, service between the village and Eagle Lodge. And the orange line uh, provides service to the recreation opportunities at Tamarack uh, from the village. So, kind of a recap there, the, the various lines that, that provide that. In addition to that, we operate a seasonal, winter seasonal service between Mammoth and June Lake. Um, that, that service can also, it's not really extensively used for this, but this is an opportunity with a recreation focus to maybe mention it, to access the June, the June to Mammoth trail system and come back. I will tell you, the last good snow year we had, I did that. I hopped on my cross country skis at the village first thing in the morning. I got out at June Lake Junction. I ski back to the visitor center. I hopped on the purple line and took it home. Or, yeah. So it was it was a fun day and a way to use transit for a, a recreation opportunity. Um, there is an opportunity for a return from the Sherwins area for anyone that's skiing in, in that area, uh, coming out to access either the gray line or the red line to get back into town. And the Shady Rest Trails area can be accessed using the Purple Line, which has a stop of as you're saying. Some of the benefits to transit in our area, and in terms of uh, both for recreation, but just in general, uh, obviously it reduces congestion. If somebody's on our bus and not driving their private automobile, they're not on the road uh, contributing to congestion. Uh, eliminates the need for visitors and residents, but the visitors who may not be comfortable or used to driving in snow uh, from having to do so. Um, it reduces the impact and, and or need for parking, both for the ski resort and for businesses. If people use the bus and they're not park, having to park their bus at a restaurant or bar or store or wherever they're going. And ultimately can reduce the need for visitors and residents, and I use it, or I, I reference specifically seasonal workers to even have a car here. That's a challenge with employee housing, but much of the employee housing in the community does not have parking available here. So, but the, the transit system is so extensive that people are really able to effectively come here without a car and, and meet all their needs. I want to pass on a compliment I heard just yesterday from the Rick Commission Chair. She has so many comments. We're going on and off about the fact that they're here, they don't need a car. Every, they love the transit because they were a little wary of it, but they're getting all over the place and they haven't moved their car yet. So it's true, it works, it works all the time. Very good, thanks. Quick uh, picture of the funding for winter transit. Um, we get a combination of federal dollars.
personnel bought various uh, state dollars, uh, local dollars that come through uh, Measure T, which is a portion of the TOT tax. And then, uh, again, specifically for the winter uh, season transit services, the bulk of that, about two thirds, is funded by Mount Pounds. It's got 1.56 million total for the winter season. The challenges uh, of winter transit and winter recreation, uh, some of the challenges of peak demands, just timing. Uh, nice day, everybody wants to see right up until 4 o'clock, and they all want to go home at the same time. It's a challenge. And we're going home at the same time that most people who didn't take the bus or in the car. So we're providing them meeting the peak demand of ridership that uh, the cars and road congestion that uh, contributes to an interesting because we're just talking about phones I don't know how we could do it. I think an interesting study would be if there were a way somehow to have a peak load out at the end but somehow could eliminate the backup of the boys and traffic back of the village and see what the impact of the I think we'd get a forty percent an increase of 30 or 40 percent across the village. Well, I mean, when I say the village, I mean it's all the way up the road, the village out. But if they could come down unimpeded and get to the village unimpeded, I think we'd get 30 or 40 percent more buses up to Maine. I don't know how we do that, I don't know how we measure it, but it's, it's a big deal. We'd have to use the PDs to block at the scenic loop. Basically, escort with the marked vehicle. I can't say it can't be done. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's realistic, but it's but it is a challenge. It's not only that everybody's skiing up to the last minute and wants to go down to the last second, but then at the same time that our travel time doubles. So, just it's a relay. Yeah. Plus yeah, we, we talked to Chief Davis about the you know, escorting buses yesterday and stuff like that. Of course, an offshoot is, I, I always wanted to see what the numbers were the day after Thanksgiving with that tough and stuff. It's holding a lot of people stuck up on the mountain until 7 o'clock. That's where they were. Yeah. The crosswalk is, is an issue. Uh, some bridge goes on. Some of the bridge goes on. I know well the country really remembers the, the uh, late 80s and the uh, hour, two hour, three hour wait to that all the time, in addition to the crosswalk, we're talking about the bus shelter, as you know, on the east side, the work of the development that's coming in, and in sure some way to fix the whole thing, better traffic control, forest trails. Right. Yeah. 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 Take a look at the crosswalk traffic. Um, even a 7,000 skew day, and it'll be back up to tier two. Absolutely. And we know we operate totally the exemption beg for forgiveness on there. So. so how do we we're getting off here in the slides. That's so. all right. We're, we're going rogue. Yeah, it's okay. So the way I think about it is, you know, 
to make your investment before you start. So if you have a problem with too many vehicles coming down, how do we keep the vehicles from going up? And I think the transit is the answer. We got to get people in get, taking transit up so they're taking transit down to kind of mitigate and that problem. So I don't know how we get that, but that's one solution I've always been supportive of. before it starts. That's interesting. Uh, All those are in the conversation. Could you? Because we are running through. Related to that, and I'm not, I'm not necessarily advocating this a question. Could you? The mountain cooperation with the Forest Service and California and some other else. Charge basically at the gate just past four stories. That if you're going to go through beyond this point, it's 20 miles, whatever. It's all day long. And the only, the only way I would be you know, supportive of something like that is if there was a immediate place. Right. Absolutely. Right. And that takes away your parking that you have 
there entirely. You have to corral. I, I like the analogy that the Las Vegas Strip is a perfect example. Right. Wherever they have those crossings, they've had to barricade to get people to use the elevated crosswalk because they're, you're inclined to jaywalk. Right. But you're, you're absolutely correct. Though we have to do something with some type of rail system. Or Which is easy with snow. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll just have to burn. First time. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I was that I was thinking of actually just looking at this summit and the program of things, and I had something this morning with bat bikes and they're growing in popularity, but there are challenges from a transit operator in terms of transport because they don't fit in under our existing racks. Um, and if, if that continues to gain in popularity, I mean that could be a, and we have we don't we take our bike racks off in the winter of the buses just because it's Something else to deal with that we don't have any demand for it from water. Something else is going to get run into with chicks or something. But if that bike's really, you know, popularity kind of takes off, we might need to have a request to, to keep those on. And then is it, is it a modified system that could accommodate that in a wide attire? Yeah, it's, it's funny you actually had it there. Uh, we had the fat bike. Uh, Summit conversation this morning, and one of the items that was brought up was, you know, hypothetically, uh, the town started doing more treatments on the Lake Mary bike path. And would fat bikers want to do what the summer recreation bike users do and get a free transit ride at the top and ride down? And the answer is we don't know because we haven't done it. But if we did that, what does that look like? And how do we facilitate that, that, that amenity? That's why we're here. We, we don't have trailers. There's actually nothing out there for it. Like fat bike jet. It doesn't mean that we couldn't custom build something. But well, the cab driver just run on his back and everybody's leaning on each other. And I don't like that with the expensive bikes. And then, but it's also they, they go crazy. just dragging a trailer up in the middle of winter anyway. This is right. a challenge. Yeah. So what does that look like? And, Maybe it's some hitch mounted rack mounted system that's totally. And a turnaround up. just at Tamarack is great with a trailer. Yeah. 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 We go through there with trailers, but it's straight it's through. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so uh, yeah. It's a mystery to talk about packing skis and snowboards. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of the challenges that we don't really have in the summer and people don't have that right. much gear with them. You start to put all the sidestep on the people and put all the skis outside of the bus. Yeah, although I, I will say, from our experience with the low floor bus and not having an exterior ski rack, that it's it's very positive, it's quicker. Yes, yeah, And the first year, there were lots of questions, quasi kind of negative, and you know, but we've seen that go down. People just get it that it's easier and quicker to just hop on. One step you're on, you just hold your skis. It's not a big deal. Um, just a couple of things that I brainstormed in terms of you know future opportunities, you know better connections with more, with expanded recreation in the Sherwin's area potentially, and I, I know, and I'm tagging on something that John Whitworth mentioned in one of the sessions that I was at, but about better connectivity uh, from the Sherwin area. I call it Sherwin area pit, but there's different names for it. Um, I just see more and more people in the on man of the Reed Road with snowplay uh, things than I have in the past. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like there's a lot more people out there. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any service there now, but that's potentially something we're that just talking about that. We start to have like find and that snowplay area. Right, yeah, and that parking is a problem there. Right? Yeah, because it's yeah. yeah. John, when you consider these new areas, do you follow the same kind of criteria that you for unmet transit need, a ten percent, ten percent, or is it uh, a, a user demand? How how is the decision to provide access driven made? Well, I'll say one thing: in the town of Mammoth Lakes, it's a little bit different because. It's all fare free, so it's fun to buy the town. We can go and want to try a bus out to X, Y, Z. So, so the, the recovery, the fare recovery, is, is 100 percent. There's no subsidized you know, government funds going to it. So, so it's more based, you know, on input on demand or feedback from 
a session like this or something like that. Okay. So we wanted to test something. It's just a matter of funding it. Yep. Right. You know, and, and, you know the, the, the scenic group thing, in theory, might be more of a um, expansion of the June Mountain Shuttle, where rather than just once in the morning and once in the evening, I mean, you could do it now, Well, except we don't normally go out that way, but we could. The route, we've done it both ways in the past, and time-wise, except on a really bad day, is um, pretty much the same operationally. Yeah. So we could we could go out that way and come back that way if there were like every two hour frequency, for example. So you know, you'd go out, you know, there's a bus coming back in two hours uh, or an hour. I mean, whatever. But I mean, it's, in theory, you could you could look at an expansion of that route, which could provide that opportunity, and the route would just transit along to include and provide that opportunity. And I don't know, other is kind of... Oh, the other stuff that every people got, you know, being the, the middle city there, and I like to turn around and challenge. Yeah. But that becomes an area out there, too. You could have a drop, same type of thing, back old mammoth and all that. That is a turnaround challenge, for sure. Um, we go beyond... What you do the names of streets. Yes, yeah. last yeah. two. No, but... but uh, so the one starts with an L. And yeah. It's called Laverne. Laverne, yeah. Laverne. 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 You almost got to yeah. turn around right there. That's where you right. get out at and you're on your own to hike up. Right. 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 And there is there is physical space for that if you wanted to put ground down or do something. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. 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 There's a place. Yeah. 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 It's you really want to do that. But the year that we expanded the gray line out Old Mammoth Road, we actually went up and we wanted to go use red for the, for the turnaround, but there was opposition from that community and so our solution was to go up to Laverne and turn around there and then throw it up to Laverne um, but we never picked it it's a lot of miles and it's a pretty big hill in right you don't you don't realize it but it's a pretty pretty good hill and it was next to nothing so yeah the question everybody this would be a snow pike destination so we're trying to direct people to the wow Right. right. And would that generate enough additional? Yeah, would that generate enough yeah. back here? Right. If you plow out an area for that, then we give you a little park there. Bill's kind of set it up as to what we really wanted to talk about today. Yeah. The ultimate thing, summary. We wanted to give you all so, the... I think that was all I had. Yeah. Right Basically, now. it's kind of an overview of what we've got, a couple of thoughts, a couple of challenges uh, with transit and recreation, but then to solicit any input from that community. You know that we have to, uh, I think it's going to be interesting, John, as we synthesize the comments from yeah, these various tracks. What we're doing. Um, I think the input's going to fall in your lap for the other media. conversations. Um, Shady Rest had comments that were applicable to us. I think what's going on next door is going to be applicable to this meetings. Uh, the meetings. So uh, it'll be interesting once we distill this down, we'll probably present you with another set of comments second to this meeting for consideration and for further comment in that conversation. That's that's late space. So, right. Right. so they're over there talking about how to get your buses up to late space in early winter. <laughs> Beyond Tamara? Well, the, or just to, to I don't know, but you might want to listen to see what they're Not to get a plan. Not to get a plan. Yeah. I, I do have actually a couple of questions. Okay, yeah. Um, Thanks, one is just about bus stops, because I think like in the village, I always see you know, people are, that's a pretty popular, or pretty well used bus stop yes. to get up to the mountain. And you know, people are always just sitting on those. They no walk banks. super awkwardly, and I was really bad for them. I'm like, oh, they need somewhere it's nice to sit. But I don't, I don't know how that that kind of infrastructure. It's in future planning already. Pardon me. It's in some future planning already. We're actually going to bus stop by the stairs there, but it wasn't there. And then well, well, this is also I met a red one by two. two. So the area that you're yeah. talking about is across from the vacant parking lot, right? Yeah. Right there. Right. So that's actually in a planning document and actually could be funded right now, but as we move through development, that could change. Um, and it's definitely on our radar. We've offered um, some partnering with some other groups to get that done for them since we have a relationship with Caltrans. So that's something that's 
very high on our priority list is something we'd love to see get done. Yeah. It, is, it seems like because the, 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 the connectivity is you know, really pretty good, but the user experience, you know, based on that that kind of element is maybe not. The experience is horribly diminished by the fact that there isn't any pedestrian walkway. There's no safe yeah. place to hang out, and there's there's no real good crossing there. Yeah. So. Um, and then one additional question is just about paying like you know if you get an uber you can just click your phone you know and, and everything's done like I, I took the bus from I had to take it from Bishop up here and I didn't realize I needed cash and I had no way to get cash and I was like okay so I guess I'm walking to Mammoth I'm like, I don't know you can borrow from somebody else at the bus stop yeah and, and I know like you know swiping cards could be like could you know, be a problem for schedule because if you have 10 people getting on the bus and trying to swipe Ten cards. I, I don't know if that it was an impractical way of doing things, but there is technology, you know, that, that can facilitate that kind of that kind of pay structure. You know, we actually have the, the reason that we don't have that on that route mm -hmm. is as as the, the value of each transaction goes down, the, the percentage charge to, to process it electronically goes up, mm -hmm. um, and Given our current, we don't do a lot by a credit card, but given our current system, it's not cost effective under like a $10 threshold to, to take charges. You almost have to charge people to $3 service here. Yeah. Card. yeah. So on our longer routes, if you go to Reno, you can use your credit card on the bus with the driver. But because of the $7 is the maximum fare, we don't do that. But it's not to say that we can't continue looking at it. And yeah, because I, I mean, it's the direction. Right, right. People going. are using it's, it to walk in. Right. Yeah, eventually it's like it's going to have to happen, right? You know, what that timeline would look like. But. I will record that as well. Even if it was I unmet need. It's there at the Bonds, right? That's what the pickup is? Or? Yes. What do you think was some kind of a station that we could prepay? Yeah. Yeah. Where it's a machine to prepay and then you just hand your chips to the driver. Rather than having to have cash, maybe. Uh, so a lot of people. Yeah. But yeah. Well, then you don't have the apparatus. I, I still understand that it's a higher cost. But maybe if you use your credit card, it's yeah. seven bucks to get to Mammoth, and if you don't, it's five or whatever. The internet's in charge of coordinating like with the bonds or something. You could actually go and buy a bus pass yeah. from Mammoth. Yeah, again, it's a timing issue because most people arrive at the last exactly. moment. We say, well, you have to go and wait in line with bonds and right, buy your exactly. ticket. But if you knew you could do that, yeah. Yeah. and you have it in advance. But it, no, that's an interesting observation. But it, it, and it, and just because the technology is there and it's moving in that direction, right. it seems like, you know, leapfrogging that, that like your suggestion like, would be a, probably in the long term. Hey, that's more charge 14, way. that come in both directions, right? Yep. All right. Yeah. 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 Buy my front yeah. to it. Well, yeah, actually, if you're going around trip, then you can get a, get a charge there. I'm coming. I'm assuming if you're coming up on the bus, you go back on the bus, like most likely, but not necessarily. But you, you can make them buy the round trip regardless if it's on credit. Right. They, they can use it at any time. It's not only that day. Yeah. So yeah. Those yeah. Are yeah. <laughs> but you know, interesting, interesting point. Yeah. Right. 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 Right